Hey guys, um, so let's start digging more into some more endocrine disorders. So tonight we're going to talk about thyroid and parathyroid disorders. So your thyroid gland on your neck, um, we call it, um, it's, it does a lot of functions. And so when you have issues with your thyroid, a lot of times it can get very uncomfortable and hard to manage day-to-day -day life because the thyroid stimulating hormone in your thyroid gland, they're in charge of metabolism. Uh, managing your temperature, managing your energy levels, and um, your thyroid stimulating hormone produces uh, T3 and T4 hormones, um, you know, to kind of help support this. So just like all endocrine disorders, there's two extremes. There's too much or not enough. So let's talk about too much. That's what we call hyperthyroidism. It's hyperactivity of the thyroid gland. Um, it can be caused by a goiter, a tumor um, to your, uh, we got a brain tumor, um, thyroid cancer, or even autoimmune like Graves' disease. So what does a patient with hyperthyroidism look like? Think warm and fast. They have increased metabolism, increased vital signs, increased age progression. In other words, they age faster than what they're supposed to. They can have a goiter as a symptom, like I mentioned, which is that, um, you know, excessive um, size to their, um, in their throat, like over their thyroid gland. Um, they can have a brewy, um, which is kind of that whooshing sound, uh, we call them over that gland. And they can also have what we call exophthalmus, which, you know, in this last picture, um, you saw like kind of the bulging eyes, like she has in that top picture. That's what exophthalmus is. But this patient, like everything's moving too fast and working too fast. It's literally like, um, um, uh, we call it, they're being forced through time, <laughs> you know, uh, not just with their aging, but everything is moving fast. It's hot um, and uh, very, very uncomfortable. They can have weight loss. They can have a lot of vital sign changes like tachycardia um, and things like that. So we can actually um, go into what we call a crisis. And that crisis is known as thyroid storm. Um, and this is where, because our thyroid levels are so high, we go into a storm. Tachycardia, they can go into heart failure, shock hyperthermia, they can get into agitation, neurological changes like delirium or seizures, they can get vomiting, diarrhea, go into coma, really, really serious stuff. So, you know, um, this is not just like, hey, they're a little bit hot. Hey, they're, you know, um, you know, their eyes are bulging a little bit, you know, like, you know, things like that. This is like severe. So this is why we need to monitor their vital signs closely and look for when it gets severe, where they have so much thyroid hormone that they can go into complete shock and a multi-organ failure. So um, what are we going to do to diagnose this? So we're going to do some labs. So we talked about before with the pituitary gland that it makes something called TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. Think of that as the cheerleader. This is where some people get confused. Thyroid stimulating hormone is not how much hormone that you have in your body circulating. It's how much you're making. So thyroid stimulating hormone stimulates you to make more Hormone. So if I have a whole lot of hormones um, in my body, if I'm in hyperthyroidism, my TSH is actually going to be low because I work on a biofeedback. In other words, if I have too much of something, my body's going to tell me, hey, whoa, 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 you have too much of that. You don't need any more. So if I have too much thyroid hormone, I'm going to have a low TSH because my body's going to say, hey, you have too much. You don't need to make any more. However, um, of the actual hormones, which are T3 and T4, I'm going to be high. So in other words, I have low stimulating hormones because I'm already making too much and I have high levels of the hormone itself. So high thyroid hormone, low stimulating hormone, um, because my body is trying to tell me, Hey, you have too much. Stop making this. You don't need any more. Um, my goals are all uh, as a whole are going to be uh, to suppress the secretion of the thyroid hormone. I want to treat the symptoms. I'm going to give them respiratory support, reduce their fevers, replace their fluids. These patients can get really dehydrated um, and eliminate and manage their stress. Um, or help them to figure out how to do that themselves. Um, if they have a tumor, we're gonna do radiation or surgery. Um, and um, we also um, can um, remove the thyroid if uh, we could um, uh, necessary, if it's severe and there's no other way to um, treat it. We can also do drugs. We can do anti-thyroid drugs. We can give iodine um, and we can also do beta blockers to help treat some of the symptoms the patients are gonna have with hyperthyroidism.
So if they have their thyroid removed, which is what's called a thyroidectomy, um, the thing you have to keep in mind is where's the thyroid? It's right here on the neck. So we were going to be worried about airway, airway, airway. So their airway breathing circulation. Um, I want to keep their head of bed elevated and no neck flexion because they just had, um, you know, uh, we got their thyroid cut out. Um, the thyroid and the parathyroid hormone are all closely connected and the parathyroid hormone um, manages your calcium and uh, we call it um, phosphorus balance. And so um, keep in mind that, you know, a lot of times with this, it's common for patients to get low calcium levels. Um, so I need to monitor their vital signs and their calcium levels closely because I'm going to be looking for hypocalcemia. Um, and so I'm going to be looking for the Shavastek sign, um, which is a sign of hypocalcemia. Um, and I always remember Shavastek text because that's the cheek you push you put a finger on their cheek and they're gonna go kind of go like this they're gonna get the little squinty eye going on um because it's like a muscle spasm because of their low calcium they can also have a trousseau sign um and so i always think trousseau's two fingers so they put their um when you take their blood pressure two of their fingers are going to come together um in response to the low calcium level so it's like muscle spasms that happen because you have low calcium so i need to be monitoring for those on the other end, more commonly, and I'm sure that you know someone, or maybe you yourself have this, we can have low thyroid um, problems. So this is a hypoactivity or a low activity of the thyroid gland. Um, it can be because tissue got destroyed, um, they're not synthesizing the hormone, we can have disease of that pituitary gland that's making TSH, we can have an iodine deficiency or autoimmune diseases can also lead to it. Um, so this is the opposite. So remember warm and fast for um, hyper, for um, hypo, it's slow and cold. They're fatigued, they're lethargic, they don't feel like doing anything. They can have depression, um, weight gain, low exercise tolerance, they can have decreased cardiac output. Um, and they also have what's called myxedema, which is a puffiness or edema of the skin and soft um, subcutaneous tissue. It's like they have a mask-like appearance because of that puffiness and edema, especially in their face. Um, and so, I mean, I know a lot of this sounds like what you, how you feel right now in nursing school, but this is extreme level um, when this happens where these patients cannot even move or um, get out of bed. So of course, just like there's thyroid storm, there's also a complication of hypothyroidism known as myxedema coma. So remember that myxedema, that, um, that uh, puffiness of their face. Um, a myxedema coma happens when they get impaired consciousness or complete coma. Um, and it usually happens when you have hypothyroidism and then you get an infection or you're taking other CNS depressants or maybe you're exposed to cold or trauma. And so pretty much you're already having all these symptoms where your body's moving really slow. It's not processing things. Things. Um, it's depressed, um, it's cold, and then you add more of that to the plate and it just puts you into complete crisis. Um, so they're going to have a subnormal temperature, so they can be extreme hypothermia. They're going to have hypotension, hypoventilation. They can have complete cardiovascular collapse. Um, and what we're going to do is, of course, give them what they're missing. They need IV thyroid hormone because they are in complete, like, um, you know, kind of think of like heart failure. We get to the point where the body is just not working. Everything it tried isn't working. It's kind of the same for this, for the thyroid hormone. It eventually gets to the point where all of the defense mechanisms are just shut down. It's not working. It doesn't have what it needs. So it just says, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. So, um, yeah. So just like with hyperthyroidism, with hypothyroidism, we have, uh, uh, <clears throat> we're going to look at, what was that? <clears throat> we're going to look at the TSH, and then we're also going to look at the thyroid hormones. So with these patients, remember, my thyroid stimulating hormone tells me when I need thyroid hormone. So in a patient with hypothyroidism, I don't have a lot of thyroid hormone. I need more. So it's going to be high. It's not high because I have a lot of the hormone. It's high because I need a lot of the hormone. So TSH responds to what I need, not what I have. Um, and then they're going to have low levels of T3 and T4, which are your actual hot thyroid hormones. So high levels of, I need more stimulating hormone, low levels of the hormone itself. Um, the treatment's going to be a low calorie diet because these patients are going to gain weight and be at risk for complications from those, um, you know, those kind of um, disease processes um, when you're not, you know, um, uh, metabolizing things well. We're going to give them levothyroxine. It's, um, you know, one of the most common medications used. It's literally thyroid hormone. So keep in mind with most endocrine disorders, when you're missing a hormone, we replace it usually. So we're going to give them back that hormone. And then we're going to monitor their temperature and skin closely. 
So let's talk about the parathyroid gland. These are very rare. Like, I don't know, I'm uh, maybe have seen it one time in a patient's history, but I've never taken care of a patient that's had this, but it can happen. Most of the time it's related because they had a thyroid problem first, and then we messed with their thyroid, which messed with their parathyroid. So parathyroid hormone and um, the parathyroid glands, they're in charge of regulating your calcium and your phosphorus levels. Um, they also, because of that, are involved in bone growth and um, breaking down of your bones. So that's what's going to be most of these are going to be focused on. So again, we have our two extremes. We have too much parathyroid, not enough. So let's talk about too much. So too much parathyroid hormone um, or parathyroidism can happen because of course, because of a tumor or any disease process causing hypocalcemia. So chronic kidney disease, too much phosphorus, a vitamin D deficiency. Um, it can also happen because your gland itself, um, you know, grows in size, gets hyperplasia, and then it loses its function. So kind of think about like when the heart gets thicker in heart failure and you think, oh, that's more more helpful, but it actually stops the function and can lead to dysrhythmias. It's kind of the same thing. When the um, parathyroid gland gets bigger, it also loses a lot of its function and it can't send those signals that it wants to as effectively. So what does this look like? So patients that have hyperparathyroidism are going to have hypercalcemia. So they're going to have loss of appetite, constipation, fatigue, muscle weakness, hypertension, angina. Um, and so the, you think hyperparathyroidism, they're making too much calcium. Um, and the complications, of course, you know, and these might not make sense at first, but if you think of it this way, most people think calcium, like, you know, that's a good thing. If I have too much calcium, I have big, strong bones. But here's the thing about calcium. In order for your bones to work effectively, you have to be on a balance. So you can't have too much calcium, but you need to have enough. And so if I have too much calcium, I'm going to break down my bones because my bones are going to be like, hey, I have too much. I need to get rid of some of this. So my bones are going to break down and be weak. If I have not enough calcium, I don't have enough to support my bones. So my bones are going to be weak. So I need to have that balance. So if I have too much calcium, I can have osteoporosis. I can go into renal failure. I can build up those kidney stones, you know, those calcium oxalate stones. I can go into pancreatitis. I can have cardiac changes because remember calcium is one of those that helps regulate and can um, be involved in dysrhythmias. And I'm also going to be a better, bigger chance of having long bone fractures. Um, overall, what I'm going to do is um, check their labs. And remember, this is kind of like with the thyroid stimulating hormone, hormone the parathyroid hormone is going to be elevated. Um, what do you call it? Um, and um, uh, we cut them. It's elevated um, because there's usually a problem where I'm making too much. So there, because remember we talked about for this one that a lot of times they um, there's something off in their uh, brain where they're making too much. So even though I have too much, my body's still making more. So my parathyroid hormone is usually going to be elevated. My calcium levels are going to be elevated and my phosphorus levels are going to be low. I'm going to need to do a bone density scan because remember I said these patients are high chance for osteoporosis um, and fractures. So I need to see what their bone density is at. I'm going to do treatment through um, if they have a tumor, surgery, and radiation. I'm going to dilute that extra calcium by giving them sodium chloride, also helping prevent those kidney stones and those other complications we talked about. Um, loop diuretics can help to get rid of some of that excess calcium, um, biphosphates to support their bones so they have a less chance of having that bone breakdown, um, phosphorus replacement since usually it's low, and then I'm going to monitor once I give all these treatments, their calcium usually is going to go to the opposite end. <coughs> excuse me, and it's going to go low. So since their calcium is going to go low with treatment, I need to keep an eye. Remember those signs of tetany, the Shavaz tech sign, the, um, and then the trousseaus, the two fingers. Um, so both signs of tetany or hypocalcemia. So hypoparathyroidism is incredibly rare. Um, with this one, you have low parathyroid hormone. So your body is not making enough. You have low calcium. So it's the opposite. Remember, low parathyroid, low calcium, high parathyroid, high calcium. Um, my phosphorus is going to be up. This can happen when I accidentally remove, um, and not me, because I'm not the surgeon, <laughs> but when a doctor accidentally removes part of the parathyroid gland, because they're embedded in each other when they're trying to take out that thyroid hormone. Um, and they also can be from tumors. So we're going to, of course, watch out for hypocalcemia and watch for that tetany. And then um, to treat it, we're going to replace that calcium because that can be life-threatening. That is thyroid disorders in a little handbag. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about these. I know these aren't as much fun as cardiac, but 
There are people with these disorders, so we got to give them some time. I'll see you later.